Dude, it, was, it sold millions of single copies. Huge, huge. A song about nothing by a drunk guy. It's kind of like my whole, like, I don't know. It's, it's ludicrous, man. I came into Mark's Garage one day, AKA the studio, Mark's Garage. I came in there and him and Josh were like, oh, we recorded uh, Jesus Built My Hot Rod by Ministry. I'm like, what? You know, because it's the stupidest song. And, you know, it's, this is the story I've heard. And I, I confirmed that with someone who was around those sessions recently. Gibby Hayes shows up to the studio from Butthole Surfers, if you don't know who he is. Shame on you. Uh, he shows up to the studio paralytic, unable to walk, just wasted. And they sit him down in a chair and he mumbles into a mic for an hour or two. And then Al Jurgensen spends the next two to three weeks editing tape, like not, this is before Pro Tools, editing tape, making tape cuts in order to build this song to make it make sense. Um, and it does not make sense if you, the lyrics are utterly ridiculous. But it became ministry's biggest hit. And I mean, it got huge, you know? I, I would not have picked this song. I would have picked something off of Land of Rape and Honey or Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste because it's way more political. This song is like about whatever is going on in Gibby's mind when he's drunk. That's what it's about, right? So I was kind of bummed when they said that. And then I sat down it started recording it, and they were like, dude, it's so much fun. You're going to love it. I'm like, no, nah, probably not, you know? I started recording it, and I had the best time. Like, we all loved recording that. And that was one of the big things behind this is, like, having fun with it, you know, because music's supposed to be fun. Uh, some of you may not know that, but it's, it's a secret. It is supposed to be fun. Um, so I recorded that and had so much fun. And another unique thing about that is, is that it's the only song out of our, what, 24 year existence now where all five members of the band have a vocal part. So instead of like paying rights for these samples, which the record would never come out because it would cost millions of dollars, we all just recorded the parts for samples ourselves. So, me, Mark, John, Chris, and Willie all are on a song together, have a little vocal part. And our producer, Josh, did one thing. So, and it was just a whole lot of fun, you know? Super fun. So it's one of those songs that uh, I didn't think would work, but did. You know? It's one of those songs that reminds me of Destroy Everything by Hatebreed, right? When I first heard Destroy Everything, I thought Jamie Josta had lost his mind. I'm like, it's one riff, dude. Destroy everything. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, this is never going to work. I was like, he's gone off the deep end. And then they play it, and the place goes, ape shit. You know? Jamie's a smart dude. He knew what he was doing. And so did Al Jurgensen, who was also a smart guy. It's super catchy. It gets stuck in your head. After I recorded that, like, I listened to it for a week, like three or four times a day in my truck. Like driving around, it's so catchy. No wonder it sold like two million copies as a single.